The return of Bradley. But not yet. First, the desert. Oh, is this a flashback to Hohenheim entering Shing? The Sage of the East. Just calm down. We need to have a civil conversation about this. Please, we're all in this together. Things didn't start out so great for the, the Eastern Sage. He's got blonde hair. He must be from the West. Ah, oh, well. I guess we should at least take the time to bury him. Whoa. Check his pulse or something. Wait, he's still alive. Yeah, yeah. Impossible. Just hang on. Hey, are you all right? What were you doing out here in the desert? <laughs> if you only knew this story. Too scared. From humble beginnings. I know you are. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Surgeons. Damn. Hohenheim has the best openings. <laughs> it's always good when it's Hohenheim in the beginning. So it seems like he's having a conversation with himself. And that could just be him like in trauma or going nuts a little bit. Or it could be a connection to something we've already seen, which is that he is in some way aware of, or maybe even in communication with the various souls inside of him. He mentioned a name at the end of it. I couldn't quite make out what it was, but he's talking to someone specifically, it seems. So it's not just like him debating himself. And as always with these flashbacks, I'm asking myself, why now, right? And the thinking that I have for it is that there was some weirdness about what happened last time with father attacking Hohenheim and like sticking his hand in, <laughs> sticking his hand all up in and realizing something weird was going on. And my guess was that Hohenheim had prepared for that somehow and had done something with the souls inside of him. So I'm wondering if this isn't connected to that in some way. About Hohenheim's journey east, besides the rough strokes of the story, it seems kind of a blur, like what happens when he gets to Shing? I'm guessing that, you know, he just finds his footing and develops into somebody who's actually useful to them. And so in that sense, it's kind of cool to see the beginning of that, like to see that he wasn't just like this master sage that was born perfect, like he had, all, he had this terrible experience, he was almost killed. He had nothing, seems like he's on the verge of giving up basically but it seems like he was able to turn that around and actually do a lot of good to the point where he's a revered figure he didn't ask for this power something terrible happened to him but he ends up being you know this really powerful force for good episode six the return of the fuhrer here we go this is what i'm here for <laughs> the epic return of bradley who for some reason i find myself rooting for there was surgeons the renowned master carpenter surgeons he was often that's what he said to the palace for repairs do you remember him his son Dazur had a deep admiration for his father he worked hard to follow in his footsteps tommy's boyhood dream was to become a respected scholar so these are the souls inside of him right and my fellow slave Andal, he bitterly considered me his rival because i was favored by that's master. what he did Sal was Interesting. somewhat of a remorseless reprobate. He was awaiting execution. He was probably the most determined to get one last shot at you. Huh. So this is very directly what Heinkel was saying, I think. The idea that the souls deserve a chance to be free and actually get revenge. That, you know, if it's the right person using them, you're actually giving them a chance. Hohenheim is doing this in a very targeted way where I guess he's using these souls, which are not just people he knows, right? It seems like because he is combined with them, he knows them as if he is them to actually make a targeted internal attack in Father, which is crazy. That does shine some light on the last conversation they had about don't count us out, right? They're working together, all the, the human souls. And so maybe the thing that Father wouldn't do is something like either he wouldn't self-sacrifice or he wouldn't listen to and embrace the human elements inside him rather than like separate them. And just how would he go about that? Every single one of these tortured souls has now invaded your being. It was a trap. Always layers. You're contaminated, and each soul inside you is working with me. Working to see your destruction. You actually spoke with them? That's right. Unlike you, I listened to what they had to say. It took time, but I managed to learn the name of every last soul. 536,329. Whoa! <laughs> I was thinking it was like five. He mentioned a couple people. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of soul searching. Whoa, what the heck? Your flask is broken, dwarf. We will destroy you. And that container of yours is the first to go. So his body is the container. You will suffer the pain of the thousands of lives you've ruined. Yeah, it's not going to be that easy. That 
the hell? You've picked up the bad habit of condescension in your many years, <laughs> haven't you? Owen? Is this the actual dwarf? How is it possible you can live without your skin? Did you honestly believe you're the only one capable of evolving? I told Pride you to chip I off the old block. Becoming the perfect being. Good, I'm glad it's not that easy. I'm glad that he is as advanced as Hohenheim. Plus, that was a really cool sequence. He looks awesome. There he is. Are you serious? He's storming the front? Do they really expect me to make a complete mockery of myself by entering through the back door of my own palace? <laughs> <laughs> Infantry men, keep back! I thought he was just like attacking this tank. Run! Impossible! Damn. Not surprised though. Oh my god! I was not expecting that. Well, I guess he's not messing around. <laughs> what the heck? This is insane. Damn, speaking of you wanting your villains to live up to your expectations, every time I think I have a favorite action sequence recently, they just keep surpassing my expectations. This fight does something really well, similar to what they did with the owl fight, which is that you hear about these characters being amazing, but they're reserved. You don't really see them. We've seen Bradley fight a little bit, but I think because he was fighting Greed the last time, they were more evenly matched. Seeing Bradley against the army or the world, you're like, oh yeah, he is actually this terrifying force for, for very good reason. This is not politics, right? Like he actually is a military force in himself. I feel so conflicted about it because it's just so cool. And it also feels somewhat justified, like in some way of thinking about it, since they did kind of do him dirty and he is kind of returning to what he believes is his. But he's killing Brig soldiers, which is... You know, it's hard to stomach. Damn. That's not gonna do it. He's everywhere. Oh no. And he left his grenade that was in his the back of his pants the whole time. I don't believe it. The old bastard just took out a tank. He took out a lot more than that. Oh no, Buccaneer, no. No! Captain! He's alright. He's alright. No, stop! Just stop right there! Just stop what you're doing! Okay, it's just auto mail. Stay down! <laughs> What's the issue here? Your country's leader has returned. Now open the gate for me. This is a true test right here. I said open the gate, Lieutenant Foreman. Who's more terrifying? Bradley or Armstrong? That's a tough one. I feel like Bradley is more forgiving than Armstrong. <laughs> Please forgive me, Colonel Mustang. But it looks like I'm dying here. Brave man. That's enough of that. You can't die a heroic death crying like a coward. Don't even think for a second you're gonna die a more manly death than I am. <laughs> oh, no. I've got plenty of fight left in me. Oh no. Humans always make a point out of being foolishly stubborn. Ah, you got that right. You know, they always get so frantic in the heat of the moment. Oh, it's... Not pathetic as it may be. Yeah. And they sure are. I still prefer to side with the underdog. <laughs> All right. This seems like fate in a way. I just got a phone call that your husband is all right. The Fuhrer is alive. This is maybe their best hope for getting Bradley on their side or getting him to stand down or something. It's like the one thing he cares about on a human level. He's not badly injured, is he? He's fine. Totally fine. We'll have to pin this on Briggs. Wait, what? We have to protect the Colonel. Damn, that sucks for Briggs. That leads me to believe General Armstrong is leading the coup. Wait, General Armstrong? But you know what? She'd probably be okay with this. Oh, she was recently transferred to Central, wasn't she? As dark as this is. It just feels so wrong. Having to blame General Armstrong. It does feel wrong, doesn't it? If you had any sense at all, you would have stayed out of my sight for good. Yeah, my avarice tends to make these decisions for me. <laughs> 
And right now, I want your life, Wrath. Yep, better get out of the way here. It only took a moment for me to evaluate a path among the falling rubble. The rest of it. Oh no, did he, he rock leaped? Of course he did. You're Ling Yao, right? Hey! I haven't seen you since we hid out in that crummy apartment. It's good to see you, Warrant Officer. It's Lieutenant! Oh, whatever. I owe you one, so I'll give you a hand. And I've got a score to settle. <laughs> the truth is, we both got a grudge to settle with this self-righteous old bastard. Seems like he's more integrated. That was both Ling and Greed talking, right? <laughs> this battle has so much more meaning now. Like, these fights have Trying so much more impact. Spot, huh? After seeing what Bradley can do to normal people. Unfortunately for you... He's got nothing to hide anymore. <laughs> oh no, come on. No, son of a bitch! How are you still alive, man? Oh, I knew it. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> At least he got his sword. You've got some rather impressive abs, huh? <laughs> now, what are you gonna do without your fancy sword play? Are you trying to get killed, dumbass? Then again, I appreciate the help! Now, let's see. Not exactly my weapon of choice, but I guess that I'll just have to make do. <sighs> Piss me off now, old man. There is just so much going on. <laughs> this is insane. I hope the Buccaneer sacrifice actually means something. But Bradley looking kind of unstoppable right now. Buccaneer's just hanging out in the back. He's like taking a breather with the sword in his stomach. He's just chilling with his head <laughs> resting on his arm. He does have strong abs. Strong organs, too. They're sending another battalion up the shaft! <laughs> Sorry, but I'm kind of busy if you haven't noticed. You're gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I am? But we've hardly got any men left here. What the hell am I supposed to do? <laughs> just figure it out! It's easier said Captain, than done. Hang in there! I guess it really is up to me. Hey, yeah, take inspiration from Buccaneer. Buccaneer someplace safe on the double! Right, yes sir! Grab that gun! We're moving it! Yes sir! <laughs> what is that? What the hell's going on? Wait, I think I see something. <laughs> yeah, you saw it all right. Nice, is it Lanfine? Oh, it's Lanfine's father. Ah. Nice moves, old man. And thanks for the help. Really saved my ass. I wasn't trying to save your ass. I was saving the body of the young lord. Well, it's the same ass. Your sickening chi is radiating yeah. from the prince's body. Seems like there's less Although, and less of a distinction between them. It did them. actually help me to locate you. So, why don't you tell me who this is we're fighting? Especially since neither of us could leave a scratch on him. That's Fuhrer King Bradley. Do you there. not know who he is? <laughs> Having some regrets? Well, this is the first time I've actually laid eyes on him. So now I know what the bastard who took my granddaughter's arm looks like. Right. Bradley's unmoved. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's without a doubt the best episode I've seen so far for overall action, like start to finish. It was just one thing after another. <laughs> I feel like I couldn't get my breath the whole time. The Bradley entrance is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. Definitely lived up to and exceeded my expectation. The greed Bradley sequence also really cool. Buccaneer earning major points just for his badassery. Like, you know, they talk about their 
their commitment. You believe in them, right? You believe in the soldiers of Briggs, but I guess that's the like the theme this episode. Seeing people deliver on what you expect from them. For him to keep getting destroyed like that, but keep getting back up, and then actually have it as a plan to take Bradley's sword by using his own abdomen, it's insane. He is a big talker, right? Like he's sort of brash and he gave Ed a hard time, but these kinds of things put it in perspective because he shows up and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. I think just showing up and doing what you have to do and being capable is such a dominant force in the way I think about people, you know? You can forgive any character flaw, like any minor mistake, any idiosyncrasy when you have moments like this of just pure heroism. I had a similar thought recently in Attack on Titan. Spoilers for Attack on Titan if you're not watching that show, where Uloa died. Because before that I was so hard on him, but you know, even though he wasn't so capable, let's say, he died in a heroic manner. And so my memory of him or my thoughts about him were completely overwritten. Like any every negative connotation I had for him wiped out by his sacrifice. And that's kind of a cool thing for me to note in myself because then that's something to aspire to, right? Like being the kind of person who can just handle it, like handle things. That seems like a way to the top, you know, to the ultimate, just being awesome. <laughs> If that makes sense. When it counts, right? Like knowing your moments and then having the strength to actually, you know, do your part. And weirdly, it applies to Bradley too. Because even though in many ways he's on the other side from me as a viewer, he has the same feeling of ultimate ability, justified anger, a clear aim, and the tools to make it happen. Ignoring the sides for a second and just imagining the qualities, right? Bradley is somebody you want on your side. He's someone you look up to because you know you're in good hands if you're with him. You know that things are going to happen. Things are going to get done. And he's able to get it done in such a glorious fashion. And then father too, right? Like Hohenheim had his number for a second, but then no, father is a formidable force. You know, he does have tricks up his sleeve. He has been growing. He's not going to go down easy. So I feel like in a nutshell, what I like about this episode so much, besides the, you know, the great action sequences is just like people showing up, people living up to your expectations. I think that's a, a difficult thing to pull off in a show. And I think they do it very well. Another episode without Ed, right? But you don't even think about it. The cast of characters, you know, is more than enough to carry these episodes. But yeah, that's the end of episode 56. We only got eight more. I'm getting like that feeling again, the feeling of both excitement and sadness simultaneously. But yeah, I'll see you next time for what I'm sure will be another great episode.